Okay, so Yasmin, uh, can you um, can you hear me okay? I hear you good. Very good. Okay, can you, is it possible to turn your sound up a little bit? My sound? No, oh, that's fine. Just get a little closer to the microphone. Okay, a little closer. Okay. okay. Very good. Like that? Yeah, that's much better. Excellent. And uh, Albert, you were going to say something earlier as, as to a win? Oh, I got a lead for a, a commercial, someone who wants to buy the current building they're leasing right now. So I'm, I'm actually just reached out to uh, Robert regarding a commercial agent. Good. Uh, they're already occupying, they have a business running at this location and now they wanna pursue the sell, the, the owner to maybe do the sale. So that'll be good. Two what city? Uh, Huntington Beach, I believe it is. Yeah, Huntington Beach, 2.5. Right. Perfect, okay. Sounds good. Very exciting stuff. Okay, let's go mastermind with Neil. We've got a great guest with us today, Yasmin Smith. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're very excited. Very, very excited. A few more people will join us. We're actually broadcasting. We're recording this and broadcasting this on Facebook right now. So wave to all your friends out there. There you go. All, all the all the Facebook friends. Fantastic. Yasmin, you're from Las Vegas, correct? Yes. Good job. So why don't you just take a couple minutes, give us a little Reader's Digest version of your business, how many years, you know, your general marketplace, the types of properties that you're working on, and um, then we'll kind of go from there, okay? Sure. Um, I have license uh, to sell real estate since 2011. I moved from South Florida to Las Vegas back in 2010. I used to build homes in South Florida, refurbish them. Then I went from refurbishing to buying land and building homes. Then I got divorced. I sold my business, moved to Las Vegas, got my real estate license to sell. But selling was a different story than building. Uh -huh. So I got my license, hung it up to a small uh, brokerage, like a pop mom shop. And then I used to go there every day for five years. I didn't sell one home. Wow. They used to uh, put me to do their open houses floor time. And when I greet the client into the office and qualify and all that, then they took over and they do the sale. So I was like, okay, I don't know. This is this way. So. I was uh, financially stable, so I was okay with the money. But <clears throat> I was minus these MLS and all kinds of stuff. So I used to check on the MLS every day, closing, who sold this, listing taken. And I noticed that certain amount of agents control the market. And I said, they must, they must be doing something that they control the market, these 10% of people or 20% of agents. And I said, they must be doing something to get the business that I don't know. So then one of my friends told me, they are Mike Ferry agent. And I said, Mike Ferry, who's that? So she said, Google it. So I Google, oh, da, 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 Mike Ferry. Oh, oh, he's a motivational speaker. Oh, cool. I want to see him speaking because one thing that he tells these people is working. So I even got better. I find out where he was speaking. And I went to see him and I saw him speaking. And then he gave me a free ticket to go to the 2016 uh, Superstar Retreat. And I went and I hear him talk and I said, I like this guy. So I signed for coaching. So uh, then I got assigned a coach. My first coach was John Joseph. And he told me what to do. You read this script, you practice, you do this, you do that. So I was so happy and excited. I went to my office and I was chanting aloud my scripts. And my broker used to see me through the camera and she called me and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm chanting aloud my scripts. I said, why? I told her because I want to take listings. And she said, good luck with that. And she started laughing. Good luck because if I don't conquer those expired scripts and for sale by owners, I'm being a broker for 20 years. You never wanna do it. And I said, wow, she have a negative mindset. I said, well, 
If you didn't do it, I'm going to do it. Watch me. So I called my coach and I told him, can you please find me an office that do what these agents do, the mind scary stuff? Because my broker just shared this with me and I don't think that's going to help. So he told me, hang up with me and call this guy. His name is Alex Garza. Tell him that I send you to him. So I call Alex Garza and he said, okay, come over. I, I will interview. And I said, right now? Say yes, right now. So I drove from my office, come to Alex, and then he walked me through the sales floor. And then I see on this big wall, it said, hard work, more money. And I say, hey, that's what I do, but I don't get the money. I work hard, but I don't get the money. So I said, I like this place. And I sign up and all here, my broker and all the agents are MFO. So I felt like I'm home. So, and I took off from there. Well, that's fantastic. So you worked for this other broker and they weren't giving you, were you pay, they paying you a salary or something? No. Nothing? Nothing. Did it never occur to you that maybe they should have? Eh, I don't know. I just like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I get it. Uh, okay, so with, uh, with the training that you did uh, with John Joseph, uh, if, well, first of all, tell me, uh, uh, did you, uh, we, uh, English is a second language for you? Yes, English. Uh, what, where, where were you born? Uh, Colombia, South America. Oh, fantastic. Okay. And you've been in America how long? Like uh, 28 years. Wow, good for you. So your, your background was in building and, the, and when you got the divorce, you just moved to Las Vegas. Of all the places, how did you choose Las Vegas? Well, it was a depressed market at the time. And then it was a lot of short sale scenario. I said, well, I have a lot of opportunities over there. I don't want to deal here. I don't want to build by myself. I want to move away from my ex-husband and all his family and friends. So I said, I have friends here. And my friends said, you come over here. You will start working and you will make money anyway. Got it. Got it. <laughs> That's fantastic. So when John Joseph, um, so you work, Alex Garza uh, works with uh, they think the broker or the owner there is um, Juan, Martinez. Juan Martinez, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Alex Garza is the vice president of sales. And, right. and he, um, John Joseph referred me to Alex and Alex told me, come over. I will interview you. So I came over and I was so excited to be here. Perfect. Yeah. No, it's good. It's a good, it's a good environment there. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about the process. I mean, this Last year, you uh, you closed how many transactions in 2020? 24, I think I did bad. How many? 24. 24. And uh, the year before that, what'd you do? I think 18. Got I it. 18. And then the previous 24. Okay. And then this year so far, how many closed? 15. 15. And you're on track for? 30 about 30 transactions, fantastic. So walk us through going from 18 to 24 and now on to, to 30. I mean, this is, um, you role play every day? Do you prospect every day? Are you door, can you door knock in Vegas? Is it too hot there? I, I door knock, you know, it doesn't matter if you say hot, cold, rainy, I just gotta go out there. So I do role play, uh, Every day, Monday through Friday, I have two role play partners, one at 7.30, one at 1 p.m. Okay. I also practice my script every day, uh, 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes before bedtime. Okay. Every quarter, I choose a script to master, and that's what I'm focused on. This quarter was the listing presentation. And next quarter will be something else. So whatever I work out with a coach, I grasp it every day, minimum five hours, maximum eight. Minimum okay. 50 contacts, maximum 80 to 100 contacts. So, and I grasp it until I get the appointment. I don't care if it takes me one hour, two hours, five hours. I refuse to go home without an appointment. 
So, okay. So most of your business is listings or buyers or split? 100% listings. 100% listings. So you won't put a buyer in the car? No, unless it's my seller that sold, I sold a home and I have to get them a house and I have to qualify them with my lender. Okay, got it. So it has to be one of your sellers. Got it. Okay, cool. All right. And uh, the, so, so uh, what's your best source of business? Well, right now, uh, it changes as the market changes. I only do prospecting and I door knock around my listings and such. Um, my source of business right now is just sold. I get a listing appointment with 10 to 12 contacts and it's a secure listing contract signed. Uh, back like uh, a year and a half ago was expires and for sale by owner. Uh, we have no much expires and for sale by owners and selling themselves very quickly. So I dig myself into the chustle, which I have mastered that street with my broker. He has taught me what to do to get a listing with 10 to 12 contacts. So walk me through what, what you do. What's on the, day, what's the a, procedure for that? On a daily basis? Yeah, walk me through, you know, if you have 10 or 12 contacts, if you're making, what, what do you make? 20 contacts a day, 25 contacts? Oh no, how many contacts a day are you making? Minimum 50, maximum 80. Got it. So you're making 50 contacts a day. So with 50 contacts a day, are you setting two or three appointments? Yes, two or three appointments. Then I qualify them and I decide which one are ready to list, which one will be lead follow up. Okay, got it. Okay. So, um, all right. So how do you go through the qualifying process? How do you determine which ones are ready to sell and which ones aren't? Well, I'm looking for a listing now. I am a driver, so I'm a hunter. I want something now. I, I get little like, okay, this one is going to list in a week or two. I don't want to waste my time. So I decide to go to the ones that they need me now. They need to sell within a week and the contract's going to be signed what I'm going to present. So Yasmin, so it kind of sounds like you pound the pavement with 50 to 80 contacts looking for two or three appointments in order to identify so you can go on one appointment. Yes. Uh, you're, it's, if you're doing 30 transactions, you're doing two closings a month. Does that sound right? Well, this month I have five closing. Last month I have two or three, something like that. Okay, all right. So, so right now you're closing even more business. Yes, I have five endings. I closed uh, this week three and I have another closing on Friday. So five this week. Five, five this week, good for you, good for you. Thank you. So just listed, do you pick a certain community or a certain type of neighborhood to make your phone calls in? Or do you, uh, you just open the book and go? How does that work for you in terms of where you're going to make your calls? Neil, I am not an analytical person, but I have learned with my broker to have a structure. So before I used to be all over the place, and then I used to do 20 contacts. I used to do 25 contacts to get an appointment. So now he told me, if you focus around these areas and he showed me a map, he sat with me and he told me what to do. And then you just call around those areas. You don't have to be driving all over town and wasting time. So I'm focusing on the East and I'm focusing on North Las Vegas that are the hardest, the hardest uh, selling, selling areas right now. So, and then when I take a listing over there, I door knock it when I take the listing. I door knock it when I get it under contract and I door knock it when I sell it. And then I call around that area, like 25 in the street and then 100 and then 300. So anyone that goes there, I'm all over. So sometimes I take one or two listings on the same street. 
Good for you. Good for you. So you're really hus you're you're trying to get if you get the listing, you're trying to get another listing or two in the same general area, correct? Absolutely. Or the buyer for my listing so I can sign the other. Was that mom's work? What was Got it. Hold on a second. Let me uh uh I got it. Okay, thanks, Robert. Okay, sorry, Yasmin. So that would oh, no worries. Technical difficulty. Um so it it sounds like you've got a very focused mindset. Um what do you attribute that to? How do you stay in the game? Are there is there any days that you don't feel like doing what you're supposed to be doing? Um, and how do you deal with that? Actually, I'm stubborn. And I think that's one of my biggest assets for the business, my stubbornness. I refuse to do things that they're not going to be productive for me. Launch with friends, launch with clients, launch with title reps. I refuse to stay home and do nothing and not being productive. Even on my day off, if I have things to do, I came half a day here and I finish the job for the next day, the, the load not be too, too heavy. So yes, I'm human. I, I get tired, I break down, I wanna stay in bed. But when those days creep in, I said, woman, get up of bed and go to work. You got no other choice. You have to go to work. <laughs> so I get up and come to work. Good for you. Good for you. Um, you said something just now, then I just lost the thought. Um, uh, tell me, on, on uh, Jamila asked a question here in the chat box about uh, could you role play the just listed script or just sold script? Right now? Uh, yeah. Sure, why not? I'm up for it. Okay, good job. Let's do it. So ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. Neil, this is Yasmin with Century 21 Real Estate. Neil, I just sold a home in your area over 123 Main Street. It has three bedrooms, two baths, and it sold for 450,000. We know when someone sells a home, usually two more sell right away. So I was wondering, Neil, when do you plan on moving? Uh, don't have any plans right now, Yasmin. All right, good for you, Neil. How long have you lived at this address? Oh, about 12 years. 12 years. Wow, that's a very long time, Neil. Where do you move from 12 years I ago? Moved from Los Angeles. You moved from Los Angeles. That's fantastic. What brought you to this area? Uh, well, it felt like there was some opportunity and um, uh, kind of worked out, kind of worked out. Made All some money right. in the house and there's work to be done. Kind of been tough the last year, though. I understand. I understand. So you moved to this area for great job opportunity. That's excellent. How did you happen to pick this area, Neil? Uh, I had a friend that lived in the in the general area. You have a friend that lives in the general area. That's great. And let me ask you, if you were to move, Neil, where would you go next? You know, maybe we'd go back to family in Los Angeles. Wow. You, you want to go back to family in Los Angeles. That's great. And when would that be? When would you like to be in Los Angeles with your family? Well, my wife and I were talking about doing that in um, maybe the end of the year, the beginning of next year. The end of the year, the beginning of the next year. All right. Okay. Neil, before I let you go, who do you know that would like to sell or buy real estate that I may assist? Good job. Oh, so you're not interested in me now. No, no, sir. I want to do the <laughs> So you want to... Wow, yeah. you caught me off guard. Oh, good job, Yasmin. Yes, sir. Boy, did I get slam dunked on that one. Absolutely. So Neil, okay, all right, I understand. So, you know, who do you know that would like to sell or buy a house that I can assist? And then you told me, well, my friend or nobody, okay, I will keep you in mind and I will keep in touch with you. This is my number in case you need anything or I'll keep in touch with you when the time comes, I'm more ready to assist you. Yasmin, what would you do with my information? Would you keep it? Would you follow it up? Do you do any of that? I will keep you. You said you will move in six months or by the end of the year. So that's close. Uh, it's close. I will follow up with you and put you on my database. So how would you follow up on me? What would that look like? 
I will call you in two weeks or a month and bring you something of value. Hi, Neil, how are you? The market is great. I ask you for your family. I have the past clients paid by my broker. And then since you're not ready, I don't want to be asking you for business. I will touch space. I will give you a little market stats. And then I will continue to ask you if you still have those thoughts of moving or if there is done. And he said, no, we still, we still put until the end of the year. I will send you a card in the mail. Got it. Got it. How many people in your database right now? Uh, 455. Okay. And you've been doing this for what? Four years? Uh, actually four years. Yes, sir. Four years. Right. Okay. And do you use a particular database? I know somebody's going to ask that question. Every day I have to call 10, 10 people of my database. I go yep. from letter A to letter C. And uh, if I finish the whole alphabet, I continue for the next quarter, start with letter A. And sometimes they don't, they don't answer, but I left, left a voicemail. I have a voicemail script. I, I, am not, I don't know anything by my head. I'm all scripted. And they, they listen to it. And when they're ready to leave, they say, oh, Yasmin, thank you for calling me so much. I get your voicemails and your emails or your cards. Are we ready to leave? I say, oh, that works. Yasmin, can you can you uh, can you share with us the uh, voicemail script? Do you have sure. a candy? Sure. Yes, yeah, sir. I, I get it. Thank you. Okay, so ring ring ring. You don't answer. Hello. You don't answer. I want to. Oh, I don't answer. Right. Okay. That's okay. I have Wait, a. Wait, am I script? Am I scripted? <laughs> Yeah, say, hey, Neil, this is Jasmine with Century 21 Real Estate. I haven't talked to you in a while, and I apologize for that. I was thinking about you, and I just wanted to give you a quick call and say hello and see if you need anything from me in the area of real estate. If you need my help, call me immediately. Again, it's Jasmine Smith, Century 21-702-815-6011. That is 702-815-6011. Thank you and take care. Wow, fantastic. Good stuff, good stuff. Are you using a particular database system like uh, the Century 21 one? Or are you using a top producer? What do you use? Uh, top producer. Top producer, okay, cool. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Um, very cool, okay. Uh, Past client and sphere. Do you do you mail anything on a regular basis? I, I love to send them uh, cards, uh, Christmas cards, summer cards, fall, beginning of the year, New Year. <laughs> I go so, to the dollar. So store. you you send to the database a card every couple of months, every quarter, something like every that. Quarter. Every quarter. Got it. Do you have an assistant, or how does that get done? Ah. Uh, I'm the assistant. I do that during the weekends. Okay. But I, I'm getting I'm getting into talking to my broker and the, the manager here to help me out and get me an assistant because it's getting a little. Oh, I remember we talked about that when when I met you. Yes, sir. That's right. I do remember talking about that. Interesting. Okay. Good stuff. Um, all right. So uh, let's open it up for a few questions. See if anybody's got any questions here. For Yasmin, is it Jasmine or with a Y, Yasmin? It doesn't matter. It all sounds the same. Yeah, just spell the check so you can cash it, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I understand. Good job. Okay, some questions for Yasmin here. Who we got? Albert, you you got a question for me? It looked like not really, but now I do. Uh, hi, Jasmine. Uh, Thank you for sharing. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, your selection from people that say they don't want to buy like that role playing session that you did where uh, they want to buy in a year. Do you try to ask more questions to see if that's just the, the front that they're doing because obviously they don't trust you from the giggle or do you just go ahead and move on? Obviously, you, based on the role play, you just move on. But is that what you always do though? Or do you try to dig in deeper? I, I follow the script by the T. The script said, if they don't want to list or they stay less than three months, Forget it. Go to the next. So that's what the script said. That's what I do. Yeah, the, I'm just trying to understand if if we should try to dig in more to find out whether they're 
they're just trying to front because they don't know us. I mean, they're calling us when they're talking to us for the first time versus once we ask more questions, they, they can go ahead and be more receptive to giving us any information when they really do want to move or sell. Well, this is what I'm looking for on a short stall. I'm looking for hesitation. When I'm doing with an expired and for sale by owner, I'm looking for motivation. So I have learned with the training from my broker, I'm following the script by the T. When I'm doing short stall, I'm on an autopilot. No, no, I'm gonna die in the fine box uh, in six months. I wanna list in today, not tomorrow, not in six months, today. So I continue. When I am on autopilot and I'm not expecting anything and there is that phone call that they hesitate and they ask, how much do you sell it for? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's funny that you call because my husband and I were thinking about moving. Oh my God, I can't believe you calling me today. It's like I call you, it's the universe. So I'm looking for hesitation. Once they hesitate, I have something going on. I stop, my, put my brakes on the gas, I'll stop, I listen, and I follow the script by the T and I set the appointment. Mm, good, interesting, thank you. Very, very cool. Good job. All right, good. Great question. Thank you, Albert. Other questions? Uh, Tess, go ahead. So it looked to me that you are totally coachable. You really follow the system of Mike Ferry. Um, my question to you is for doing 50 contacts a day. Okay, how do you do that? Do you watch your uh, what you're doing by the hour in an hour or how do you I guess my real question is how do you overcome the repetitious boredom I go door knocking when I'm bored <laughs> or I have no off I have no action sometimes the phones are quiet even the show soul if I have in 15 minutes no much no contacts no action I switch to another area if I don't have any result I switch to uh expire so many little expired if i don't have my contacts in x amount of hours i said this is it i gotta go and talk to people so i print on one of my listings that is about to close or pending or i stole and i door knock and i get my contacts and i have taken listings door knocking by door knocking seem to me that you get more listings by door knocking which no. one is that the percentage between the door knocking and the telephone very minimal door knocking. That's what I'm bored and I want to break the repetition for them. My main source for business is prospecting over the phones, regardless of my accent. Oh yeah, of course. You catch it right away too, which is really good. Wonderful. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, you know, the accent, let, can we talk about that for just a second? Absolutely. Something that I'm trying to talk about. Well, it, it's interesting because you it's not stopping you, correct? No. Okay. Because I get that question, you know, I've been doing this for 44 years and the question comes up and we have people with, with half of your accent that won't make the phone calls. And, you know, you, you definitely, there, there's an accent, but it doesn't stop you from being the you you want to be. I just, that's so impressive to me. Well, thank so you. So how do you do that? How, I mean, where, where does that come from? Is that just, you have no options and you need to make money? No, actually I do love what I do. So money will come. Money is not the main thing. I love money, money motivates me, but it's something that, why not? Who is going to tell me not to do what I love to do and what I want to accomplish? Who's going to stop me? No one but myself. When I'm talking to people over the phone and they don't understand what I'm saying, I will ask them, if I speak a little slower, will you talk to me? Will we communicate? Say, sure. So I say, aha, uh -huh. I'm going too fast. Slow down. I slow down. I try to listen, don't cut them off because I'm, you know, so excited. And then magic happens. Then I can communicate with people if I slow down. Got it. Got it. Actually, Great Neil, point. thank you. Actually, Neil, her accent yes, is yes. really more of an asset because 
it's very different. And she, she really catch when by talking, you would listen to her as opposed to just a rambling voice, you know, that's an asset. Yasmin, keep it. Thank well, you. I, I mean, that's a great observation test. And the truth <laughs> is that I've always said this about accents. Um, and I think that they are assets, assets, okay? I don't have one, you know, so I don't have that opportunity, but accents I think are as assets. I think it's very smart, Yasmin, that you listen and if you need to slow down a little bit, you get it, okay? And that's, a, and, and that's, a, a, that's an asset that you're paying attention. I wanted to shift gears just for a second here while we still have a little bit of time. I wanted to ask you about COVID 2020. So um, did, did, that, uh, did that whole thing affect your business, your attitude that that, you know, last March we went into lockdown. I'm not sure exactly how, how um, Nevada treated it on a daily basis. I, Juan and I used to talk, you know, once a week about what was going on. And I know that Juan was living in his back house because he didn't want to affect his, the rest of his family. Uh, but how, how was that for, for you? How did that affect you? Well, I don't know how to work from home. I don't have an office home. So I live 45 minutes away from my office. And then I asked my broker, hey, I don't know how to work from home. Can I come to the office? And they say, yes, you can. But lock yourself and that's it. Don't open the door to anyone. I said, fair. So every day I came to work. Some, of, some days people was very depressed. I prospered every day. My, my, my schedule did not change. I wake up at the same time, dress up, come ready for business. It was quiet and dead on the street, driving from my office to the to home or vice versa. But I said, if I keep doing what I'm doing, something is going to happen. <laughs> You're right. Yes. And I came every day. They never stop. You know, and then when people were negative over there, I said, I, I understand what they're going through. So my mindset has to switch. I, I don't stop listening to Mike. All, all the Mike Ferry, um, he does uh, on YouTube, the messages. I listen to him every day. Every day I get up, I listen to Mike. So I came, to me was no change. The only difficulty I have adapting to the Zoom and doing the listing presentation over the Zoom system. Because the people I was dealing with, they don't show up for the appointments. They don't know how open the link, the elder people. And I said, I don't care if someone wants to see me and go to go to their homes and present, I'm gonna go. I went with glove, mask, sanitizer, and a paper towel roll <laughs> and disinfect all my pens and everything, my computer and everything. And I took the listings. So that didn't stop me. Good for you. Excellent. Other questions for Yasmin, please. What a great mindset. Any other questions? Go ahead, Abigail. Quick question. Do you, hi, Jasmine. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. It's such a pleasure. I have sat right next to you and a, a couple of, uh, I, I was just kind of shy and quiet. I <laughs> kept it to myself. I've sat with you uh, at the Mike Ferry events. My biggest question for you is, do you go over, I'm assuming that you have the listing presentation memorized in Spanish as well? Actually, I don't have it memorized on Spanish, but it's easy to translate. I know it by the T, by heart, inside out, forward, backwards, part by part, page by page. So when I'm going into a Spanish speaking person in front of them, I have it with me every single time, regardless that I have it memorized and I go part by part and I'm translating myself in my head and it comes automatically. Excellent. Very good. Good question, Abigail. Thank you. Okay, other questions for Yasmin? Um, there's a, a question in the chat box here. How do you get your smile to come through while you're calling? I have a mirror. 
I have a round mirror. Uh -huh. Red book is standing into that mirror. I have a big mirror here with my uh -huh. uh, with my deals closed and uh, uh, little messages. I look throughout the day. I write down on my mirror, and then I keep going. So and I have to smile because before that was the hardest thing for me to do. Today is the easiest thing since I started practicing my script every night in front of the mirror. It's automatic. I have to smile. So wait a second, Yasmin. Are you telling me that you don't naturally smile? <laughs> because um, I'm a, when I'm under stress, I, I get up tight and I close up. Well, I have to learn how to overcome that if I'm going to be a great presenter and be in front of people every day. Well, you have a gorgeous smile. It's, I mean, you smile and it's a, it's a million megawatts. It, that, that, that was mentioned twice in, um, in the call here. But the, the thing I want, I'm, I'm hearing is that you taught yourself to keep that smile on. Yes, I taught myself because I was serious about business. Yeah, I'm serious. I got to do this. I got my task, tax got in it. And then I was over the phone. I noticed that I wasn't smiling. I sound rough. I don't sound happy. Regardless, I was trying to help people. They perceive something else. And then I said, ah, Mike said, smile, smile. When I'm going to a listing presentation, I listen to Mike, qualities of a great presenter. And he said, you need to break, break the tension with humor and a big smile. And he said, when you door knock that door, hello, big smile. And I said, got it. So I pay attention. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Other questions for Jasmine? I'm sorry, oh. I have one more question. Yes, ma'am. How many times do you review your goals? Every day. Every day. Ten so times you, a day. I, you, had, I had it in front of me. The numbers goes down. I have it in front of me when I'm prospecting in that wall. This year, I have all my checks. I have 12 over there, three more coming. So I got it down to sign. I need to keep moving. So I have my monthly goal over there, my monthly goal. Uh -huh. over there. I review it every morning. I review it in the afternoon. I review before going to take a listing. It's like, it's right there. Uh -huh. So do you make a one-year goal, five-year goal, 10-year goal? Do you do yes, that? I got a yearly goal. I have a five-year goal, uh, one-year goal. I have quarterly goals. I have weekly goals, daily goals. It's like you break them down little by little. One last question. I don't want to overcome that. No. Are you married? No, I'm single. Okay. Yeah, hold, hold on. I'm married to my job. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> she, she, uh, had a ha she had a husband. She left him in Miami. I know. <laughs> that is the goal that you have to achieve. Yeah. She almost got as far away from him as she could. <laughs> Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you. Good job. Good job. I have a, I have a question. Uh, Jamila, go ahead. Yes. So I read your message that you have after your agreement. No says. Jasmine, Jasmine, sorry, you're garbled. Um, something's something's not right. I'm here. Try it again. I'm here. No, no, no. Jamila, sorry, Jamila was garbled. Am I still garbled? Um, a little bit. Try it again. I type it up on the thing and then you uh, say it, Neil. I can't, uh, I can't make it out. Robert, can you make it out? I'm going to put it in the chat box. Oh, okay. Got it. I have a quick question, Jasmine. Go ahead, Sylvia. I know you said that real estate was your life, but do you have like a work-life balance situation or is it just like a hundred percent, you know, this is what, what you're doing now? This is hundred percent what I'm doing until I achieve my goal for this year. And then um, next year I am focused on something else, X amount of transactions. 
So I am 100% focused into my career. No distractions. Got it. Thank you for sharing. Jasmine, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so on your message that you have right there in Spanish, do you find yourself because you have to slow down when you're on the phone because of your driver personality and also the language that you still find yourself that you're kind of trampling over people on the phone or the message that you have below agree, agree? No says bruta. The, the, one, the, yeah. the message I got in there, I'm glad you can read it. It's because while I am on the phone, I have to be listening to the client. It says expire for sale by owners. Don't cut them off. Listen. I wasn't able to listen. And I sounded um, empathetic. I need to sound empathetic. So I have learned, I Google it, how to, how to learn to be empathetic and how to sound empathetic. Very simple. By listening. And I said, oh, so if I listen, don't cut them off. I, I, I show them respect and I sound empathetic. I said, I can do that. So I have to be a great listener. I have to learn how to listen. And I something that I work every day. So. Thank you. you. Know, Jasmine, you're full of all kinds of wonderful little nuggets. <laughs> Thank Good you. For you. Good for you. Okay, um, other questions of Yasmin as we wrap this up. Earlier, Neil had asked what database system you use. Um, you mentioned what you do, but you didn't mention like the, like the actual system. Top producer. She, she oh, said, top yes. producer. Oh, yes. I need to listen then. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. All right, so let's do this. Everybody unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves, please. Let's give her a big hand. All right. Thank you. Good job. Good yeah. job. Good job. Bravo, bravo. Awesome. Excellent. So, Yasmin, one of the things that we do as a group, you're welcome to stay, or if you have a hard stop and need to go on, I understand that, um, is that we'll go around the group right now and ask what we learned from your talk. So, uh, we'd love for you to stay and I listen. Can stay. I can stay. No worries. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Okay, so really good stuff. So what did you guys learn today? Martin just asked, uh, do you record your calls and how often do you listen to your call calls? You asking me the question? Yeah, somebody asked that on the chat box. Okay, that was hard for me to do before because of my accent. Once I recorded and I listened to myself, I wanted to vomit. How many times I cut up the seller? How many times I cut up the prospect? And I say, oh, I am awful. But I said, no, you want to learn from your mistakes. While I'm driving from my office to my house and vice versa, I play that and I said, ha, huh, you can never do that again. So I learned by listening all the bad things I do while I'm on, on a call. What, what did you do to record it? Because my coach has me doing that and my excuse is that it's on my computer. So Okay, I have a system with the RedX so you can record your conversations and you can listen to them or you can record it on your phone. It's easy, so you can play it on your car. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. All right, great question. Good stuff. All right, so other. Uh, so what else did we learn today? What else did we learn? Uh, go ahead, Robert. Well, first of all, Yasmin, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time uh, for being on here with us. I think it was Tess, but I could be wrong. Someone said that she's coachable. And I don't know why that stood out to me, but that just might be a personal thing. Um, but, you know, it's the little things, Yasmin, that you said that we try to get across to people that it's smiling. You know, Neil and I sometimes will tell people to smile and then they get mad at us. Um, so, but it's the little smiles. It's recording the conversations. It's at, the, you did a just listed, just sold script and it's the exact Mike Ferry script verbatim. verbatim. So it's the little things that make the big difference. And you certainly do all those little things really, really well. And so I appreciate you doing that and uh, just confirming those things. Very, very cool. 
All right, good stuff. Excellent. What else did we learn today? Hello? We cannot use our accent as excuse not to be successful. Well, I know you don't use it. I don't see Yvonne use your accent as an excuse very often. You're crushing it, kid. But, uh, Thank you. but, but I think it's a, I think it's a, that's a great point. You know, I mean, um, in life, uh, we're either warning or an example, of course. And, and, um, you know, I didn't go to college. I guess I could have used that as a, an excuse for not achieving anything. Uh, but I didn't, I actually wear my no college as a badge of honor, you know, as a, as it drives my wife nuts because all of her friends have law degrees and, and doctor degrees and all that kind of stuff. So it, it doesn't have to stop you, does it, Yasmin? Absolutely not. Yeah, great. That's great. Good stuff. Okay, what else did we learn today? Um, no prospects. Call uh, more people. Make more calls. Vicky, make more calls. Good job. Don't give up. Make sure you know the scripts and dialogues. Absolutely. Yes, that helps. <laughs> Jamila, you had uh, something you were going to say? Yes, her prospecting um, area is super clean. Again, like Jean Tanner. Um, and, and sometimes when I'm prospecting, I'll have a lot of clutter. And I notice that it's just in the back. It's just driving me insane. Right. No, oh, you're look at that. Right. Look at, look look at it's very, very clean, very laid out. Absolutely. That's a beautiful, beautiful location. Good stuff. Very nice. Thank you. Question for you, Yasmin. Do you work at home or in the office? She can't work from home, she said. I can't work. Oh, from home. I didn't hear her. Monday through Saturday. <clears throat> Monday through Saturday from the office. Yes, sir. Right, got it. Okay, awesome. Jasmine, um, what's it? I want to say something. Uh, I think that she knows what to put her priorities in place. Mm -hmm. She knows what is the priority, and, and she handled it, and it showed how she handled it when she knew that when she was talking to a lead and there's not going anywhere, she knows exactly what to say and move on to the next one. That's what my would tell us you know when we have a lot of drama in our transaction okay that's it let's go go to the next she knows how to put her priorities and i just want to make a comment i don't know if it's true as pretty as you i'm pretty sure that a lot of guys are could be intimidated by you because you look at you on your first appearance you're very professional you're very you know, I, I must be very hard. If I think it's time to go the prospecting way. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, because she looks very successful and very intimidating, you know. I'm not ready for dating. I'm not ready for that because that will be a distraction. And man, my life right now is going to be a distraction. I don't have time to go in our party, drinking, giving him attention, watching TV. I don't have time for that. I'm focused. Wow. So you don't watch right. so yes, you don't watch thank you. The waste of time. I don't have time for men either. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> cares. Jasmine, you don't watch TV? Me neither. I, I watch TV. Uh please don't laugh. I watch uh Snoopy, Wonder Woman, all that kinds of stuff. Only on Sundays, certain hours, and that's it. I don't watch the news. I listen to Mike. I watch um I, I watch and listen to motivational speakers. I watch uh, documentaries, all kinds of stuff, but know what the regular person will look or, or, or listen to. So, um, Do you get involved in sports? I work out every day at 5 o'clock in the morning, 5 a.m. to 6.30 every morning, Monday through Friday. So do you have, do anything for fun other than just you're just focused right now, 100%? What I love to do for fun, since I'm trying to conquer the English language, I shadow uh, Native American people. I shadow them on a daily basis. That's fun for me. They don't know I'm shadowing, shadowing them. And then I'm, I also read. I'm reading uh, this book called End the Struggle and Dance with Life by Susan Jeffers. This is what I'm doing this year for fun. Nothing to do with work or anything, but I think it's fun. 
I listened to Mike Ferry winning, winning by Mike. And I listen that. I know those two tastes by heart. I listen to them every day when I'm getting my makeup on. And then he said that I have to read six books in one year, like I'm studying them, like I'm going to college. So I am on my second book. And then I, I listen to, <laughs> please don't laugh. So this book called Affirmations for Wealth. So I pick out of those hundreds of affirmations, I pick 10 out of those 10, I pick two. And my full time is writing them every day, five days a week, and then chanting them aloud. And that's fun for me. So that's what I'm doing for fun. Jasmine, can you tell us about your evening routine? Because it looks so pristine. I would doubt that you do it like, oh, let me just pick out my outfit when I wake up. No, I actually hang my clothes that I'm going to wear the next day in front of my mirror at 9 p.m. Every night, 9 p.m. I, I'm, I have a schedule. I'm not analytical, but I follow my schedule by the T, 100%. So at 9, everything has to be hung in front of the mirror, the outfit, the cufflinks, the shirt, the shoes, and the makeup, laying out what I'm going to wear the next day in front of my mirror. Have you always been this way? Or was it just from getting into the MFO system? Always. When I used to build homes, I used to have my uniform ready and my casket and my boots and everything. So discipline, yeah. discipline is one of the things that I think is very important. I am extremely disciplined. It, does that go into your eating habits? I can, I'm sure it does. Well, I eat anything, but then now that cholesterol is high. So doctors say you die or you go into a diet. So I'm disciplined now. And I lowered the cholesterol just by diet, no medicine. Uh, in three months, I lowered like 100 points. Wow. Good for you. Wow, congrats. <laughs> so just by eating whatever she says. So discipline. It's not bad. What's That's your favorite book? What the favorite book I'm reading right now? Or not like, right now, ever. Ever. Okay. It is a book by, mm -hmm. maybe you don't know, maybe you know it by uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, he's, uh, he's dead. He's a Colombian writer. It's called 100 Years of Solitude. I've heard that title before. And the old man and the sea. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, yes. it's a good book. Okay, uh, unmute yourselves, please. Unmute yourselves. Let's give her a big hand. All right, good job, Jasmine. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right, Yasmin, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. We're going to keep in touch with you. And as sure. you grow, we'll have you back. This has been, this is very refreshing. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome.